Hey, thanks for making it back to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Hey, a couple things. One, I will go over the um, uh, news release from the VA uh, again. Uh, but first, I wanted to uh, start off with uh, this article from Task and Purpose uh, regarding the proposal for a budget cut. And I'm um, just going to read through it here and uh, make sure that we're on the right page. So here it starts off. The VA would face major cuts under the GOP's debt ceiling plan. Okay, so that's not good already. The Department of Veterans Affairs could become collateral damage in the battle between the White House and Republicans in the House of Representatives over a rising, uh, over raising the nation's debt ceiling. The U.S. government, so this is pretty uh, funky website here that I'm on. Uh, the U.S. government faces the uh, prospect of economic turn, turn oil, turmoil if it fails to reach an agreement raising the amount of money that it can borrow to pay its bills. The federal government is expected to exhaust its borrowing ability in June. In 2011, a uh, similar disagreement over the debt ceiling resulted in uh, sequestering a budget uh, and budget cuts for defense spending that forced the military branches to get rid of service members and slash funding for training and uh, spare parts. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, they were picking and pillaging uh, plane pieces. Uh, here it goes on. House Speaker uh, Kevin McCarthy, Republican California, has proposed raising the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion in return for reducing, reducing most discretionary spending which must be approved by Congress each year for fiscal 22 levels, uh, or two fiscal 22 levels. So this is where the 22% is coming into play in contrast, right? So McCarthy's saying, let's raise the debt ceiling 1.5 trillion, which isn't where it needs to be in order to make everything whole. And oh, by the way, um, let's, uh, let's move the... Um, the uh, discretionary spending back to 22, 2022 levels, uh, which would effectively create a 22% uh, budget cut to the VA and other services that would affect veterans. Um, so now, right, now I'm seeing the VA's news release to combat this, right? So uh, here it says that, um, I'm guessing it's, uh, I can't really say the name, Shalandra, so I think that's it. Shalandra Young, director of the Office of Managing, Management and Budget, has released a statement saying Republicans plan to avoid reducing defense spending so the Department of Veterans Affairs and other government agencies would face steeper budget cuts overall, fis overall fiscal 22 levels. Cuts to overall fiscal 22 levels. So again, Basically, they're saying here, the Republicans are saying, keep the military spending, DOD, whole, but go to Department of Veterans Affairs and other government agencies, uh, to, and they would have to face steeper budget cuts to overall fiscal 22 levels. Okay, so let's go on here. In short, Speaker McCarthy's plan to raise the debt ceiling would cut the VA's budget by 22% next fiscal year, Young says. That would force the Veterans Health Administration to eliminate 81,000 jobs. That's huge. Meaning that veterans would be unable to make appointments for wellness visits, cancer screenings, mental health services, substance abuse disorder treatment, and other health care services, according to Young. These cuts would translate into 30 million fewer veteran outpatient visits. This is really important. Because um, now the question is, couldn't you cut somewhere else other than the veterans, right? Uh, so I say yes. And this is actually the call to action, right? Uh, is that there has to be a better way. The VA 
has also issued a statement, which which I read, but they did a horrible job explaining wh- where this was coming from, saying that cutting the department's budget by 22% would limit the VA's ability to provide telehealth services by reducing funding for the necessary information, technology, and support. Speaker McCarthy's proposal to raise the debt ceiling would also force Veterans Benefits Administration to cut its staff by more than 6,000 people and... That would worsen the wait times for benefits by adding an estimated 134,000 claims to the the disability claims backlog. This is on the VBA side. So when you file a claim and it takes you eight months, it's now going to take you 12 months or more. If you are a surviving spouse, this is going to take you longer to file your DIC claim, that type of stuff. So this is a horrible answer to fixing the debt problem. And yes, although they're talking about a $1.5 trillion increase, there are other areas that can be cut other than these vital services to veterans and, and spouses and dependents and surviving spouses and Gold Star families and what have you. These cuts to the Veterans Benefits Administration would come at a time when the VA is already seeing an increase in disability claims filed due to the passage of the PACT Act. Very true and great point, right? Things are bolstered up and moving quickly Congress needs to not get in the way, which expands health care to veterans suffering from cancer and other ailments as a result of being exposed to toxic, toxic substances from burn pits and other sources, along with Vietnam veterans who are sick because they were exposed to Agent Orange and, and uh, said Kerry Farmer of the Rand Corporation. Very important. Reducing VBA, Veterans Benefits Administration, staff would mean fewer people available to process disability claims, and surely this would translate into veterans waiting even longer for their benefits, said Farmer, project director of RAND's Veterans Choice Act assessment. Moving on here, past some pictures. Meanwhile, costs for the VA continue... uh, Community care program, which pays for veterans to get treatment in the private sector when the VA cannot provide health care that they need, have been increasing, Farmer said. It is not clear how the VA could continue to meet the demand for the program with a reduced budget. The VA would also have to cut up to $565 million on major construction projects under the spending cuts proposed by McCarthy. That would limit upgrades to VA hospitals, which on average are 60 years old, and other medical facilities according to the department's statement. So again, there's a bunch of old VA medical facilities that needed to get upgraded and revamped, and those are just sitting there and they're not getting better, right? So that stuff needs to get fixed as well, and that won't happen. Additionally, the VA cemetery, uh, National Cemetery Administration, would have to cut roughly 550 people, limiting the department's ability to maintain cemeteries and delaying the opening of five new national cemeteries, the statement says. Horrific, horrific. Uh, you know, the final resting place should be well taken care of. There should be no wait times. It should be a, a smooth process uh, for the people. Without veterans, this nation wouldn't exist, and it was on the back of us that it's here. So um, this is this is all wrong. A spokeswoman for Speaker McCarthy referred questions about how his debt ceiling proposal would affect the VA to his April 17th remarks at the New York Stock Exchange. Don't believe anyone who says there are draconian limits. They're the same spending levels where we operated under just last December, and we will make sure that our veterans and our service members are taken care of. Rep. Mike Boast Chairman of the House of Represent or Chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee has accused Democrats of spreading false claims that McCarthy proposed Limit Save Grow Act would hurt veterans. Uh, this bill will grow the economy and save American taxpayers money, all while protecting veterans' benefits, Social Security, and Medicare. Boast said in his April 21st statement, Republicans have always prioritized veterans in our spending to ensure veterans have access to the care benefits and services they have earned. And as the chairman of this committee, that is my number one priority. Anyone who questions our commitment to the men and women who have served 
should find new talking points. But to Mary Kaczynski, Director of Government Relations at Vote Vets, a liberal veteran group, the cuts to the VA that would result from McCarthy's proposal to raise the debt ceiling are both outrageous and unsurprising considering Republicans' opposition to the PACT Act last year over concerns about how the law would be funded. Uh, she also noted that McCarthy's proposal also calls for uh, recouping $2 billion in unobligated funding from the American Rescue Plan that was allocated to the VA last year. It remains to be seen if this pers precise proposal passes the House, Kaczynski told Task and Purpose on Monday. I wouldn't be surprised if any budget that passed the House with a majority of Republicans does include cuts to the VA, which could be total, totally unacceptable to vote vets and the veteran community. And it looks like that's how they ended it. It is. So, you know, they tried to do some contrast here. Unlike, uh, the, so when I read the VAs, right, when I read the VAs news release, um, obviously, obviously, from a governmental standpoint, uh, and I've been in government at, you know, director levels where, you know, every year you have to fight for your budget. And, um, you know, so I get it. And I am particularly concerned about the direction that the VA is going financially because we do have an increase of veterans accessing benefits and we need to be able to absolutely make those things happen. We have falling apart uh, infrastructure within the VA, both um, uh, technology-wise and brick-and-mortar-wise, and it's it's important that even even if even if we are going back to uh, a spending level not too long ago, we're still behind the eight ball because the increases of services are being uh, pushed. Right, there's more people applying uh, now than ever. Um, you know, words gotten out, uh, packed act stuff, all of that, uh, a culmination of things, and we need to be able to support it. So my view now is we need to let our congressional members know, just like I said in the last one, it's just a different person, right? So last time I was, I was off. I thought, I really thought that the VA's news release was basically giving the two sides of the president's proposal because they only referenced the president's proposal. So hindsight and your comments helped to kick me to the right page here. And so the, the proposal is coming from Congress with a rise in the debt ceiling, but potential cuts of 22% to the VA. Um, and even if this was projected increases, uh, and even if it is discretionary funding, I don't care, right? Let the VA uh, work the money that it needs to work in order to make things move. Look, there's a lot of things that can happen at the VA that need to be fixed. We all know that. So uh, we need to contact our congressional leadership and we need to let them know that the VA needs to remain whole to take care of. They can't lose people at VBA. Because this is your talking points, right? There cannot be any staff reduction because that would create extended wait times for not just you, but your family members, right? You can't have um, uh, falling apart hospitals, right? That stuff needs to get fixed. And you can't have reduced staff at cemeteries because this is the final resting place, right? You can't have a wait time. Hey, I need to... Uh, you know, in turn, my loved one, but uh, yeah, there's a three month wait time. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. So uh, I'm hoping that we get this thing corrected. We, me, I, that I get this thing corrected. And again, I apologize for screwing it up the first time. So thanks again. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.